So you had not heard about this Saudi Arabia situation? I'd, I'd heard about this individual before. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Mr. Katani, mm -hmm. who was the 20th hijacker. Uh, he tried to get into the United States so he could get on one of the airplanes on 9-11 and fly into the Pentagon or, or the World Trade Center. He was stopped by a, an alert customs agent in Florida, I believe. Um, I'm also, as I recall, I read the article this morning that she said all of the techniques that were utilized were authorized. Right. None of them were in violation of the basic fundamental tenets that were used out there. She was, as I understand it, complaining about the way in which or the, the uh, well, specifically the way in which they were administered. I don't have any way to judge that. I'm sure that the Defense Department has or will thoroughly investigate it and get to the bottom of it. They're very good at those sort of things. So uh, it's entirely possible there was a problem in terms of how one specific uh, prisoner was handled. Uh, I can't claim perfection, but what I can say is that in terms of what the policies of the administration were, uh, both at the uh, uh, White House level and in the Defense Department, was that enhanced interrogation was okay. We had specific techniques that were approved by the Justice Department, but uh, that we don't torture and uh, that we would not support torture from a standpoint of policy. It was not the policy of this administration. But just just for a general premise here, uh, looking back, you don't, nothing happened that you feel was over the line or that you feel that uh, was a, a miscalculation, a mistake of some kind? In, in terms of the treatment of a specific individual, I can't say that. We had Abu Ghraib, for example. Uh, in that case, I believe, based on what I've seen, that that was uh, the result of uh, some uh, military personnel who were improperly supervised, weren't given the right kind of guidance, weren't managed properly. Um, as we dig in and look at hundreds of, of uh, cases, we may well find a few people who were not properly treated. Um, you know, I, I ran the Pentagon. I know that you can't absolutely guarantee at all times everybody's doing it the way they're supposed to do it. I can tell you what the policy was. I can tell you that uh, we had uh, all the legal authorization we needed to do it, including the sign-off of the Justice Department. I can tell you it produced uh, phenomenal results for us and that uh, a great many Americans are alive today because we, we did all that. And I think those are the important considerations. And you're personally very comfortable with that? I am. For what, ha Ed, what happened and the reasons it happened and the end result? In terms of the uh, interrogation yes, generally? absolutely. General policy. General policy. Absolutely. Another personal thing, your, your heart troubles, obviously, you've had uh, many of them. We've discussed them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, common problem. All kinds of love, common problem. Uh, some people have suggested back to you the change Dick Cheney thing, was it that uh, the four heart attacks, the bypasses, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, also had an effect on you personally in some kind. You buy that? No. No? Jim, I had my first heart attack uh, before I ever ran for office. Uh, I was 37 years old in 1978, a uh, candidate for Congress, as a matter of fact, in the middle of it. My entire time in elective office over the last, what, 30 years now, has been after the onset of coronary artery disease. Whatever effect it was going to have, it had before that first election. So I, uh, I just don't buy that. I mean, people are want to go out and, and uh, analyze and, and uh, say, sure, you live with it. Oh, sure. uh, you've sure. had a, a very active career uh, since the onset of coronary artery disease. The technology is amazing. The doctors are fantastic. They've stayed ahead of the disease from my standpoint. I'm now uh, 68, soon to be 60, soon to be 68 years old. And uh, I've been extraordinarily fortunate that I've been able to go live a very active, stressful life. And uh, I don't believe that my heart disease uh, changed me for the worst. Well, of course, that was the other piece of the conventional mm -hmm. wisdom. Oh my goodness, eight years of the stress and strain of being vice president, he'll never make it. You made it. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. And, and the state of your health at this point is what? It's good. It's, uh, I say I'm going to be uh, 68 here at the end of this mm -hmm. month, and uh, I've got a few aches and pains and knees that don't work as well as they used to and so forth, but I'm, uh, I've been very, very fortunate to have uh, the kind of good medical care I've had. Finally, did you enjoy being Vice President of the United States? I loved it. It's been a great job. It's been a, um, obviously a tremendous challenge. I'd spent 25 years in government when I left the Defense Department back in 93. Decided I'd go spend the rest of my career in the private sector and then the president tapped me to come be his running mate. And uh, it's been a remarkable experience. I wouldn't have missed it for the world.
Did you ever, during the course of these last eight years, have a taste of, oh my goodness, uh, maybe I should be president, or did you have the desire to be president? At no. any time? No? I looked back at that in the 94 election cycle. I thought seriously about running for president in 96. And so in 94, I uh, put together a political action committee. I did 160 campaigns around the country, raised over a million dollars, and then sat down at the end of that campaign with my family and, and asked the basic question, do I want to run for president? And I conclude then I did not, that I did not want to do all those things I'd have to do if I were to mount an effective campaign. So I decided at that point, I'm not going to be a candidate for president, went off to private life. I've never regretted that or looked back on it. I think that was the right decision. And I also think my effectiveness for the president has been directly uh, related to the fact that I've not been a candidate. That When I get involved in issues in the White House or on Capitol Hill, it's there because I'm representing the president. We're working on his agenda. I don't have my own separate agenda. I'm not looking over my shoulder to see how popular I am in the polls or how I'm going to do in the Iowa caucuses. Uh, I'm focused specifically on his agenda, and, and I think that's been one of the reasons we've worked so well together. You think you would have been a good president? I wouldn't want to speculate on that. We'll never find out. All right. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much. Thank good you, Jay. Enjoyed it.